Hello. Hi. I hope I'm on. Okay. I'm Lindsay from Keep Growing Detroit, and we are here reading the Lorax. So um, I want to tell you first a little bit about Keep Growing Detroit. We would love to be at our farm today, but we are staying safe, staying home in our own backyard garden, um, furnished by plants of Keep Growing Detroit. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, Keep Growing Detroit provides uh, resources to backyard family gardens, community gardens, school gardens, all across Detroit um, to uh, grow healthy vegetables and create a thriving environment in the city. This is June. Um, this is my Earth Day baby. Um, when's your birthday, June? Soon. Next week, April 21. So um, today I'm reading on, uh, on behalf of Keep Growing Detroit. Um, but before we get started, I also want to dedicate uh, this reading of the Lorax to Gwen Carmichael and her husband who um, passed. They were both uh, long-term GRP members and um, we're really going to miss them. So uh, Gwen always came and supported distribution with a loving um, smile and warm heart and um, it's too much. But uh, this goes out to Gwen. All right, so you ready? The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Okay. At the far end of the town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing except old, excepting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. Okay. And deep in the gris grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old oncer lives there. Ask him, he knows. <laughs> you won't see the oncer, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, holed under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the sh shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps. <laughs> on the end of the rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail. And the shell of a Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snoo, his secret strange hold and his groovulous love. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup. Down slups the whisper phone to your ear, and the old oncer's whispers are not very clear, since they have come down through a snuggly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It started way back, such a long, long time back. And the song of the Swami sons rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees. My, yeah. These are our truffle trees from uh, last year. Mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits. And they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. From the riffulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tusks was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I'd unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped on a truffle tree with one 
And with great skillful skill and a great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I needed a need. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I chopped down, it was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. What did he look like? He was shortish. He was oldish and brownish and mossy. And at, he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty seize, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a truft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I am being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers of bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool. But the very next minute, I was proved he was wrong. For that, just at that minute, a chap came along, and I thought that the need I had knitted was great, and he happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy, you never can tell what some people will buy. Okay, what's that pink? I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy. I told him, shut up if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called on my brothers and aunts and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunser family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Mitch. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right, right at South, South Stitch. Yeah, sure. And in no time at all, the factory I built, the whole Wunser family was working full tilt. We were all knitting seeds, just as busy as beads, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go round. And my poor barbaloots are getting crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad, but I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know? I meant no harm. I most pr truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factories, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the sneeds I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went on right, right on biggering, selling more sneeds, and biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he, and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snargled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a cruffulous croak. Onceler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swanny swans, why they can't sing a note. No one who can sing who has smog in their throat. And so said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot leave here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. 
Your machine chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup, also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover glue? I'll show you, you old onceler, man you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum for the gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off or their future is dreary. They'll walk in their fins and get woefully weary. weary. In search of some water that isn't so weary. And then I go mad. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. Yeah. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I go. I intend to go up doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, Every, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From the outside in the field came a sickening smack of the axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle a tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under smoke smuggered stars. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance. And he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. <laughs> what are you eating? Lemon leaf. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was a long, that was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I sat here and worried and worried away through the years where my buildings have fallen apart. I worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed, the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds, and the truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Thank you, the Lorax. So, um, the work of Keep Growing Detroit this year feels more important than ever. We're um, honored to be working in partnership with so many Detroiters who are growing food for um, their families and communities in their backyards like these, excuse my uh, messy garden, um, and then all across town. So um, if you're able to support Keep Growing Detroit this season, um, we would like love your support. And June would like to say something. Get in the video. Sit down so I can see you. What do you want to say about Avalon or Mother Earth or? I, I like Avalon. I love its cookies. It's hot chocolate and it's brownies and it's lemonade and stuff. We love you, Avalon. Bye. Our grandpa really loved you. He's gone now, but we think of him when we come to Avalon and our grandma really loves you. Um, and so, uh, and then if, uh, you know, in addition to, um, you know, the food that these gardens are gonna be providing um, this summer, uh, it's also a great way uh, to engage your children in uh, getting fresh air and connecting with nature and um, lemon leaf and, uh, and and that's about it. So what else like do you want? Like eating what I'm eating, that's lemon leaf. Lemon leaf is also known as sorrel for those of you who don't call it lemon leaf. So um, Keep Growing Detroit is doing weekly um, classes um, uh, on Facebook Live and with Zoom. Um, so we're happy to support you in starting your garden this year and uh, we will be back with all of you just as quickly as we can do so safely in person 
and uh, happy Earth Day. And thank you, Avalon. We appreciate your work so much. Um, you know, for many years, you've been a champion of um, the urban agriculture community in the city, and we thank you so much. And that's all we have to say. So, bye. <laughs>